Can subdomains help me recover from Panda? Hey everyone, it's Jason Hennessy from Everspark Interactive, and today we're going to be addressing a recent news story that is causing some real buzz in the search engine optimization community. Yesterday, the Wall Street Journal published a story on one website's claim that has been able to recover from Google's Panda update by dividing its large site among several subdomains. The five-year-old site, hubpages.com, was severely affected by the update because it relied heavily on Google for its traffic. The content publishing website CEO, Mr. Paul Edmondson, guest blogged on TechCrunch about his post-Panda plight on May 5th, admitting that his open publishing platform furnishes both high-quality and some low-quality content. He also added that YouTube does this as well. However, in his guest post, he discusses his shock at the discovery that his entire domain was being punished by Google due to the low quality work of certain content contributors. Back in May, Edmondson was having no luck when he was trying to reach out to Google for help or an explanation. However, recently Hubpage's CEO's luck changed. With a great deal of hard work, Edmondson has triumphed over Panda and claims that Hubpages is slowly moving up the rankings since he began making one significant change. Since this is the first real solution that has been presented to the Panda conundrum, I thought I'd comment on whether this could possibly be a viable solution for sites that have suffered greatly since Google's February algorithmic change. Hubpages.com's mix of high quality content and low quality content is probably the reason for its 50% ranking droppings. 50%, not to mention the millions of dollars lost in revenue post Panda. Though the site has made its standards stricter and cleaned up its act, it still saw no positive results. Then a light bulb came off in Edmondson's head. He came up with the idea of creating subdomains where each content author on the site has his or her own site. This way Google can distinguish between high quality written content and low quality stuff. Finally, receiving confirmation that this was a good idea from Google's own Matt Cutts, Edmondson began testing this method in late June and claims to have already seen pre-Panda traffic on some higher quality subdomains. Encouraged, Hubpages began implementing this technique for every author on its site this week. Essentially, by separating the good content and the bad content, this site has given Google the opportunity to reward some of the subdomains and eliminate the others that have very little to contribute to what Google wants to be content farm free internet. Either Google is reassessing all the content or the revamped Hubpages has simply avoided the penalty. Either way, this is the first time a large website has been able to escape Panda's death grip. Google is treating each subdomain like it's a separate website and therefore is giving the website owner the opportunity to bounce back by separating what they know to be low quality content from what is high quality content. SEO Book CEO Aaron Wall recently blogged about this new development, commenting on the irony of the fact that as soon as Edmondson pointed out in his guest post that Google's own YouTube wasn't being punished for low quality content, while other sites, including hubpages.com were, Matt Cutts quickly responded to his queries with confirmation that subdomains were the way to go. According to Aaron, this irony runs even deeper, as he says that everything that is now the right solution is the exact opposite as the best practices from last year. He of course is referring to Google's announcement in March of last year that webmasters should allow search engines to do its job and not worry about certain pages causing a site to be penalized for duplicate or bad content. Because as Google claimed, the crawlers will recognize what is good and what is bad. Now site owners are supposed to create subdomains so that they are not penalized for bad content on their pages because the crawlers are not going to do this job. The algorithmic change did come after this advice, but the least Google could do was update their directions. Now maybe they will. This new development could help a lot of sites like Hubpages where so much content is being created and published that it's hard to keep track of the quality to overcome the frustration of making all the changes required by the update and still see no changes in the rankings. As the possible solutions to Panda's devastating effects develops, we will be sure to keep you updated. 
Check our blog for daily commentary on everything that happens on the search engines. And thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. By the way, to read the full Wall Street Journal story, please visit our blog below and click on the link. Thank you.